as most of y'all know, at the 2024 Olympics, um, there were many new uh, events that had taken place. One of the ones that were actually being fought for for like a couple years um, was uh, was the dance style known as breaking, or as is more popularly known as break dancing. Uh, and according to the report, um, it will not be returning in, at the 2028 uh, Olympic Games. Now, breaking has always been around since like for as long as we can remember. I mean, it's taken inspiration from capoeira. It's taken inspiration from gymnastics, ballet, uh, Shaolin Kung Fu, you know, it's taken inspiration from like so many different art forms and uh, dance styles that um, it's become its own entity over the decades and decades that it's been happening. Um, I myself, I've been watching Breaking since 2008. You know, I've, I've watched many Battle of the Year events, a lot of R16s. Um, in you know from Korea, in various you know events, you know one of my favorite groups, one of my favorite groups of all time is the Gamblers Crew, Morning of Owl, uh, Jinjo Crew. That's another good one. Uh, Phase T. I know even though they changed their name from Phase T to like the Ruggeds after they had their split. Or whatever happened to Phase T. Uh, Gamblers, Rivers, Phase T. Um, I like Super Crew a lot. You know, even though Super Crew been around for a lot, a lot of people don't know that they actually go beyond. You know, Knucklehead Zoo, uh, Full Force from Las Vegas. They kind of conglomerated the, the uh, Tsunami All Stars. You know. Um, foundation crew that's another good crew you know in various ones you know some of my, some of my favorite b-boys of all time is b-boy cloud b-boy negin uh hong ten physics junior uh um b-boy machine who is actually one of the most musicality one of the most musical b-boys they have out there he's a b-boy with a lot of musicality um b-boy octopus uh b-boy the end like i can just go on and on about b-boys that i've been watching over the years um but regardless a lot of people felt like breaking at the olympics wasn't properly represented uh, wasn't a proper representation of the art form most of which is because of the girl who ended up winning the gold at that event first off her round it's like they didn't put their best uh, breakers forward and it's like they just gave people gold based on like wh whoever the judges was at the Olympics for breaking, they didn't truly understand the art form, and it was like they were more just more so just giving the the medals away. You know, anybody who understands breaking, you know, especially the ones I, the aforementioned name guys like Rock Strike, Gravity, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, these should have been the guys to represent. You know what I'm saying? The art form. It's too many dope B-boys and B-girls out there that, you know, if you watched any B-boy competition, especially like the Red Bull BC1, like I said, uh, Battle of the Year, any of the Red Bull BC1 qualifiers or regional qualifiers um, or any other, you know, competition that they have, R16, et cetera, et cetera you know that there's doper b-boys and b-girls out there that represent breaking so much better than what was presented at the olympics so to even get what we saw 
like I don't the, re the only reason why I'm not playing the um the actual footage from the Olympics is because I know it's kind of owned I think by NBC or some uh media company that if I show the video it's probably going to get like you know copyrighted and all that and I I want to avoid that um as much as possible and let me turn the music down um so just look at the videos at your own leisure but what i can do is that we can look up some b-boys right now right like for example like one of my best battles of all time one of my best b-boy battles of all time had to be b-boy cloud versus b-boy nagin yeah b-boy cloud versus b-boy nagin this is easily one of my favorite battles of all time Shout out to Red Bull BC1. Hey, let me turn the music off first off. Let me. Shout out to Kira. Like, we can watch this. Now, you go and you watch uh, the Olympics and you tell me if this even matches a fraction of what these guys did. Mind you, this is from 2009. This is from 2009. You want me to expand this out a little bit? Now, Cloud, of course, some of y'all know B-Boy Cloud. Hold on, let me um, let me pause it for a minute. B -boy, for some of y'all who watch a lot of the, like the dance movies, like that whole phenomenon that was going on for like a little bit, you know, like all of, I think all of like the Step Up movies and all that. Um, Moose, who was kind of like the face of Step Up, who, who they made the face of Step Up, he actually went against B-Boy Cloud. That was B-Boy Cloud in like the black pants and a black leather jacket. Who he was battling with like in that picnic area um who moose was battling with in that picnic area that was b-boy cloud after this he went on to do movies so and i think he went on to do other big things as well you know b-boy cloud he's more than just a b-boy he's like a real good dancer of several art forms so check him out if you if, if you never seen him If I'm not mistaken, I think, matter of fact, I'm not going to spoil who won it if you haven't seen it before. You know, looking back at this now, the cameraman kind of messed up a little bit. Oftentimes, when you see after a b-boy goes through his set for that round, the other b-boy will kind of make like a, a quick response to it. And the cameraman kind of missed Negin's response to Cloud's first round. Now, some of y'all might think, oh, these rounds are short. In breaking competition, the, the rounds don't really last long as other dance battles. You know, because it, it's, it's such a physically demanding um, dancing style that, um, you know, that they have to 
they have to pull out their best moves in like a short amount of time. Now that third round, that last round, right? Not, not the third round, but that last round was actually supposed to be just like a bonus round they just did for the for the hell of it. Cause you seen KRS one came up on stage and he was getting ready to hand it over to the judges. But they decided just to go an extra round just for just for the fun of it. You know, so I believe Cloud won this year. Yeah. I'm going to Ronnie. Yeah, so that was back in 2009. Now, you know, some of y'all probably got confused as to what the hell y'all, like, what are they judging on? Well, they judging on musicality, meaning on how well the B-Boys follow the music. They judging on how well the, the B-Boy um, execute their moves. They're judging how many times a certain move was uh, reused. Um, they're judging how... Uh, you know, their transitions, their top rocks, their power moves, like they're judging all these things and they're judging their originality. Because oftentimes during b-boy competitions, you'll see people do like certain moves, um, a lot like flares, air flares, um, backspins, uh, coin drops, you know, things like that. And some of these are just staple b-boy moves. Um, excuse me, they're, uh, staple breaking moves but it depends the thing they're judging you on is the originality of how you transition into them so you know because breaking has come such a long way so uh you know you got so, you have a uh, style and you got power you know the flares the air flares all that stuff you know coin drops etc etc those are considered power moves um you know like your top rocks your transitions all those are considered st all those are considered uh styling you know style moves but um yeah those are the things that you get judged on you know oftentimes you'll see b-boys you know like they'll when one b-boy is dancing the other one will start doing like certain things like they'll start doing things like this which means that you took that move from somebody else in other words you're biting or you might see them counting on their fingers like that meaning that you know you've done this before in like a previous battle in that same uh tournament so or in the previous round so um you know these are just a couple things or if they point to the ear like this that means you're not listening to the music you're not following the music um you know just various things but that was one of my favorite battles especially at that at, at that time i don't want to play no, nothing else i just wanted to give you a visual of uh the execution like i said go back and watch the footage from the Olympic breaking uh, battles, and you compare it to anything from the Red Bull BC1 to R16. You know, if I put some B-Boy physics on, physics, physics versus junior, there you go. Physics, his, his flag spin is so iconic. You know, like he revolutionized the flag spin. Junior, Actually, like the, the the person who I seen do the most imp impressive flag spin, I think it was B Boy Darkness, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think Darkness, uh, he had a flag spin where he was like he laid face down, and he kind of picked himself up and went into a flag spin. That was like one of the dopest flag spins I ever seen, and. 
I think this was the battle that he did it back. Mind you, this is back in 2004 at uh at an event called Hip Hop Planet. And, and this is with the original Gamblers crew. This is before they broke up and they went into like two separate crews. You got Gamblers and you got The Gambler now, so. He went into an air chair. I think that was the battle that he did it in. I'm not mistaken, bro. It was one battle that he did a flag spin in, and that that was so fire. This is when Rivers went up against, uh, I think it was like the B-Boy All-Star team at the time. Like, it was a few, no, no, this is against uh, France. This is against Phase T, like France's All-Star team. Um, B-Boy Flea Rock, he another one of my favorites. Minnow, he's dope, one of the most stylish B-Boys out there. Uh, Luigi, one of one of the best uh, power move B-Boys out there. Hong Ten, one of the greatest. You know, just, you know, without going into too many videos, um, literally b-boys back to back is just you know i can name a lot of them darkness physics you know like we ain't got to go into no more but they didn't represent it right so when you have situations like what the uh let me go back to that when you got when you got situations like oh let me There you go. When you have situations like what happened at the Olympics like this, it really puts a black eye on the sport, especially the people who aren't paying attention to that dance style. It's very bad, very um, disingenuous, and it's a slap in the face to all the B-boys and B-girls out there that take it way more seriously than this. This was actually an equivalent. If if anybody remembers that hip hop video, where you seen, where you pretty much seen that white woman, she was like talking about, she, you know, she used to do ballet, but now she's doing hip hop. Y'all know that video I'm talking about. Let me see if I can find that. I'm I'm just gonna play a little bit of it. Let's see. Uh, yeah, let me see. Do hip hop like this? This lady right here. It was like some lady that just like, she basically was this uh, woman who, you can tell she was from the burbs. She didn't grow up doing hip hop at all, not dance, didn't pay attention to the music. And the video was so cringy. You know, this is like some. Hey, I'm Dina. Look at my feet. My feet are straight ahead. You don't want to do that. You want to turn your feet out. I'm going to do this backwards. And that's what makes it look like hip hop. What this is with hip hop is everything's down low. It all is in a plie. I think the first thing that you need to know about hip hop is all about your posture. And no throat. First off. Let me just say this for the record, and I know this is kind of like sidetracking from the Olympic thing, but this video was a very cringy, misinformative, uh, how to on what not to do. <laughs> this is a very, uh, cringy, like this is the name, you know, this is the name of the video. Go watch it on your own time. But the people who were around at the time, y'all know how cringy this video was. Basically, it's almost as if the woman that won the Olympic gold in breaking is like she took classes from this. And if you know, you know. But anyway, she did not. Uh, I don't even remember old, old girl name, but she did not represent it well at all. And her her 
skills, especially for the people who have been watching Breaking for a long time, even for the people that were in that were in that competition, they really didn't represent Breaking right. They didn't do right. Like they knew better than what that was. And this is this isn't the first time Breaking has been misrepresented in mainstream media. I, rem- I remember back in like the, I, don't, I can't remember if it was like the late eighties or like the early nineties, but it was like another TV show that, they, that they tried to, you know, showcase breaking uh, to a mainstream audience and they put the wrong people in place. It wasn't people who uh, actually knew the art form. It was like, they put a bunch of soul train dancers and told them to try to start like, try to start breaking and doing a robot and it looked like a hot mess and the people who never paid attention to the art form this is their first introduction to it so they're really not gonna uh they really not even gonna look it up so when i tell you go watch some red bull bc1 performances go watch some uh You know, watch some R16s. You know, that's a, a tournament in uh, Korea that Jinjo crew actually helped create, you know, in order to attract tourism um, to Korea. You know, this is just like a random video I'm clicking on. I'm I'm not even I don't even got the music turned up. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know who these two B boys are. This dude playing around too much. I'm assuming that's on or he playing around. I am I'm, I'm thinking I'm clicking on something that's there you go. There you go. This is from the 2023 World Finals. Red Bull BC1. That's Eason. You know what I'm saying? Just to give y'all more of a taste of what breaking actually is. They wasn't doing that at, at the Olympics. <laughs> it's Mighty Jake from Venezuela. You know what I'm saying? Clean breaking, man. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention like, if you ever see a B boy like slap the ground. Like they take their hand and they just like slap the ground. That means that the other B boy that's dancing uh, crashed or they like they messed up their set. Like they didn't land right, they didn't do a move right or something like that. I can't remember who won it last year. Like who won the BC one last year? Was it uh Ishan or was it um I don't know. I don't th- mm. That's Hong Tim from Korea. I think he won it last year. I think he's one of the few two time Red Bull BC one winners. See, that was a response to what Hong Sin did. F- 
for people that watch battle rap, that would be considered a rebuttal. Wigs. That was hard. Matter of fact, I think he's from Phase T. The guy that's over there to the to the to the left. Or I could have him mixed up with another another breaker. Th that is Danny Dan. Okay, I think he's from Phase T. That was hard. That's hard. That's fire. You know, out of all these breakers, I've never seen anyone fall off that stage. Which is a testament to how professional they are. The Rico, she's kind of like a new face, but she's actually breaking though. One thing about most girl B boys, I mean, most B girls, excuse me, and I don't get on my head, y'all. One thing about most female breakers is that they will not go in as hard as the dudes and get the no ditty out, out the way. But it's like oftentimes, like they break a lot slower than what the guys do. And they don't use as many power moves and they rely more so on style to get them through. So. Jeff Rowe from USA. And when we see him kind of doing a little set before they hit the ground, that's called Top Rocks. You know, everybody got their own little way that they Top Rock. You know, so. I think Hong Ten won it this year. Yeah, I think I spoke on this enough, but yeah. Hong Sin is a legend for like various reasons. Like, there's only a handful of B boys that got moves named after them. You know, B boy Wing, he got the Wing Mill. Hong Ten, I forgot what his move was called. I think it was called the like the Hong Ten Air Chair or the Hong Ten Thread. I can't remember what they called it, but you know. But yeah, that's basically it. You know, like they didn't represent it right at the Olympics. Um, they wrong as hell for what they did. She definitely didn't deserve to win that gold, and they made a mockery of the of the culture. So, you know, breakers anyway never really cared of being at the Olympics. Um, they wanted to try to make something out of it, but it just doesn't. Like, you're never gonna find real breaking in mainstream. That's the and that's basically the the moral of the story here. You're never gonna find real breaking in mainstream on any surface level media outlet. Um, 
or any mainstream media outlet for that matter. Like you're never going to find real breaking. It's always going to be an underground uh, sport because that's where the hunger is. Um, this was bullshit. If, if, if you watched this and expected this to be a proper representation of what breaking was, it was so far away from it. It wasn't even the same. It wasn't even in the same galaxy as what breaking is, you know, again, go watch the Korean R16 tournaments, go watch Red Bull BC one, go watch, you know, saying all the battle of the years that'll give you a proper representation of what breaking is and any other, uh, competitions that they have out there for breaking. So, you know, that was my opinion on it. I think breaking at the Olympics was bullshit and it should never be at the Olympics ever again, especially if they're going to represent it like that. So, that's my opinion on it. I know I took like 32 minutes to really speak on this. But again, shout out to all the real B-boys and B-girls out there who really represent the culture and uh, really put their heart and soul into their craft because this was ass. This was ass. You know, so if, if it's not going to be at the, at the next Olympic Games, I say it's a win for the culture because if you're not going to represent the culture right, don't rep don't don't use it to uh try to attract views because this is what the hell you get a hot mess <laughs>